Welcome to our lecture online. Is it possible to build a perpetual motion machine? Well, it turns out the answer is definitely no. Over the centuries, people have claimed that they've built perpetual motion machines, and especially since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution when people began to produce all kinds of machines, the idea was, of course, that it would be wonderful to have a machine that could just keep going forever and ever and ever, and many people claimed, of course falsely, fraudulently, that they built perpetual motion machines. They knew they didn't, but somehow they tried to hide it and they tried to portray that they were the inventors of these perpetual motion machines. How do we know that it's purely impossible to build one? Well, let's go into a little bit more thermodynamics. Let's take a look at a car. Now, at least the car with a gasoline engine or a diesel engine for that matter, doesn't matter, one or the other but not one with an electric motor because the principles, of course, are different with electric cars. So let's say we have a car with a gas engine and what goes on inside the gas engine is we have pistons, we have a compression of air and fuel in the piston, in the cylinder, the piston compresses the gas and then we have a spark, the spark ignites the fuel, increases the pressure, the pressure then pushes back on the piston and that backwards motion on the piston then is transferred into motion of the car, the car then is propelled forward due to that expanding gas. Now of course with most cars, well actually with all cars, we lose energy due to friction between the tires and the road, the rolling friction, the wind resistance and of course that lost energy is converted to heat. And then in addition to that, we have internal friction of all the moving parts, all the pistons moving and the wheels turning and everything turning inside the car, belts being driven, all that pulls more energy out of the total energy made available by this process. And so in the end, only a part of the energy available is used in propelling the car. And at the very end, we then expel the gases because then we want to go ahead and get rid of the burned gases and then put more uh, air and fuel, mixed fuel, in the, in the cylinders and start the process over again. And those burned gases, they contain heat and that heat is then lost. So essentially we have a process that looks like this, where the heat source is the cylinders and the pistons where the heat is generated and then the heat generator expands the gases, causes the work uh, to to occur and that work then makes the car move forward and then part of the heat is expelled expelled due to the gases coming out of the, the tailpipe converted uh, wind resistance converted to heat friction converted to heat and all that so part of the energy is simply lost and is then no longer available so the idea is to improve that efficiency as much as possible to get as much work out of that as possible and as little waste as possible. You want to reduce the friction, reduce the wind resistance, uh, you want to reduce the amount of heat loss. So you want the heat to come out of the tailpipe to be as little as possible. And it turns out if you have an old car and you put your hands at the tailpipe, the air coming out of the tailpipe was so hot it could burn your hand and now the air coming out of the typical car's tailpipe is relatively cool because the improved engineering has pulled as much of the heat out of the gas as possible and use it to convert to work and so therefore cars are becoming more efficient that way. Of course we have figured out to calculate the maximum efficiency of any sort of heat engine. The maximum efficiency can be calculated like this. When we assume that the hot reservoir has a hot temperature, the cold reservoir has a cold temperature, and then the work is then done, the amount of heat coming out of here is then converted to work. To reach a maximum efficiency, we can calculate that by taking the hot temperature, subtracting from that the cold temperature, essentially the temperature of the exhaust gases, and then divide that by the hot temperature. Of course, how do you make this into 100% efficiency. Well, you do that by making the cold temperature zero. Now, we're not talking about zero degrees Celsius, we're talking about zero degrees Kelvin. If somehow we could put, pull all of the heat out of the process of the burning of the gases inside the cylinder of the cars, in the engines, then if we pull all of the heat out, we can make the car engine 100% efficient. Now, of course, assuming that we can get all rid of all the friction, wind resistance, and all that. So to make a car 100% efficient, we need the cold temperature, the air coming out of the tailpipe, to be at zero degrees 
Kelvin, absolute zero. And of course, we know that's impossible. At absolute zero, the air would be a solid. We have solid cubes of air coming out of the, the gas pipe, and, and so that obviously is not possible. Another way to make a car 100% efficient would be to not expel any heat at all, right? So essentially, not expelling any heat, another way of looking at it, where all of the heat goes into work 100%, and again, that is simply not possible. So in order to build a perpetual motion machine, those two things need to be possible. No energy loss whatsoever for any reason, friction, wind resistance, you name it, which you know that's not possible. And secondly, no energy loss due to any heat being expelled, which we know is also not possible. You cannot cool the air, the expelled air down to zero degrees Kelvin. So here are two models of what a perpetual motion machine would look like. One is where all of the heat produced, all of it is converted to work, or where the heat produced is completely transferred back into the hot reservoir without any losses whatsoever so that this process could simply continue and then you could put something there that then would be operated by that flow of energy without any losses and so therefore this process could essentially continue forever but you know that's not possible because as soon as you put something in there that does work work will take energy out of the process less will go back to the original reservoir and this process would slowly run down there's just no possible way physically to build a machine that does not lose energy where 100 percent of the energy is used to do work and so on that principle alone, without actually looking at any of the engineering of any of the supposedly created perpetual motion machines, none of that is necessary. You don't have to look at it simply based on the facts that these principles cannot be violated. You cannot put all of the heat out of a heat process and you cannot put all the 100% of the heat back into the process to keep the process going. If you're going to do any sort of work with that machine, energy is going to be pulled out. And so for sure, with all the confidence in the world, I can claim to you that there's no such thing as a perpetual motion machine.